Okay, we've got a question here about thermodynamics, and I think this is one which we would have actually done when we're first doing the topic and when it seemed really, really difficult. First of all, it's telling us to state what is meant by the internal energy of a system. So that's just remembering what something actually means. And it is related to temperature, okay? But we can't say it's not it's can't say it's the same thing because it's you know a different term. It is the sum of all the kinetic and potential energies in a system, and you're done. Okay. One thing you'll notice about these questions is that one part usually flows into the others. So the answer you get from this will help you to think about subsequent parts of the question. So anyway, we've got a gas undergoes a cycle of changes as shown in figure 2.1. So we've got pressure on the y-axis and volume in cubic centimeters across the x-axis. So it tells us, it basically just tells us some information about what the graph's telling us anyway. It tells us it's heated at constant volume and 97 joules of thermal energy is transferred to the gas. It's pressure and temperature change, so the gas is a point Q, blah, blah, blah. Now, when we're looking at this kind of question, almost anything in thermodynamics, something you'll find very useful to think about is the first law of thermodynamics. And if you don't remember that, it is as follows. So the change in internal energy is equal to, sorry, that should be change in U. Change in internal energy is equal to Q plus W. Now, what do they mean? Q is the heat energy applied to the system, and W is the work done on the system. We could, if you want to, include minus W, okay, and we'd maybe add that W2 or something like that to show the difference, because that'd be minus work done by the system, okay? But um, we're not asked to look at it in that kind of way at this level. Anyway, considering that, that will allow us to answer the subsequent questions much more easily. So let's just look at what it's asking us. So it tells us state the total change in internal energy of the gas during one complete cycle, PQRP, and explain your answer. So you've got two marks for that. Now, we got PQRP, and you'll see that it returns to the same state it was previously. So if it's in the same state, that means it must have the same amount of energy it had before. So we have no total change, no total change of energy. And we can see that we need to link that to some evidence from the graph. It does say explain your answer. Evidence from the graph is as follows. So we, we see that it returns to the same temperature and the same pressure uh, and same volume. Okay, so basically it just returns to the same state. That's fine. Now, here you've got another one, right? It tells us on figure 2.2, complete the energy changes for the gas during changes P to Q, Q to R, and R to P. And actually, by answering this, just by looking at the graph, we are quite a lot towards answering this here. But it's not super easy. Let's first of all look at this. So. If we keep in mind that principle, the change of internal energy is equal to the heat applied plus the work done. Well, if we look at change P to Q, we can see, yeah, so some heat energy is applied because it tells us that 97 joules of thermal energy. So we can say, um, well, we can see that 97. Work done on the gas. Well, actually no work is done and that's because no volume has changed. Remember, work done is force multiplied by distance, and there's been no, there's been no overall distance change for this thing. So the work done the gas is zero, which means the increase in internal energy is just 97 joules. Okay, now we see something else. So we see the thermal energy transferred to the gas is zero. So we're going from Q to R. So thermal energy transferred to the gas is zero, all right, so that means our change in internal energy, delta U is equal to um, Q minus, uh, uh, oh yeah, Q is our um, thermal energy, which is zero, so that's zero. And then the work plus negative 42.5. Okay, so that means we've lost internal energy. You could think about this being work done by the system. And the work is done by the system because it expands. It's doing work against the atmosphere. It's expanding outwards. So here we have negative 42.5. I sort of suspect one reason students might get this stuff wrong is we're really used to multiplying and dividing things, and we might decide to use that. You might. I, when I first looked at this, I was thinking about gradients and all this kind of thing because we can relate pressure and volume to NR and uh, temperature, but we don't need to do that for this. Anyway, um, we've got 42.5 here. All right, now, what we need to do with this one, this is where your other marks come in, because this is worth five marks, which is, quite, which is quite a lot for this. What we see is, because what we've determined here is there's no total change, okay? So 
At the beginning, we've applied 97 joules, but then it lost 42.5. So at the end, what else is to be lost? Well, we just do 97 minus 42.5, and we get this figure, 54.5, okay? So remember, it's got to be a negative increase because it's losing stuff, so 54.5. Okay, and then last of all, we need to look at the thermal energy transferred to the gas. So it's got to cool down. Let's look at this here. So we've got 54.5 and 37.0. Well, so that means the thermal energy is just the difference between these two due to this here. So we just do 37.0. Zero, don't know why I put in the point zero, minus negative 54.5, and we get 91.5. Let's just check our signs here. So 91.5, well, remember that's got to be negative as well, because the work done on the gas, we've done some work on this gas, but it needs to return to that zero point. So it's gained this, but lost this, which means it needs a total loss. Uh, to, to get that total loss, you need to lose this amount of uh, thermal energy. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, ask me some questions. Um, don't look at the mark scheme because it just gives you the numbers. Okay.